So more Timur questions, of course, uh, it's integration this time. Uh, thank you to Jacqueline Tyler, whose email will be down below. We all know about her nowadays, the legend. Um, don't need to explain any further. We're going to draw lots of pictures in these uh, in this paper here, like lots of them, like this x, y axis is going to turn up so many times, right? Because root x look like this. And x minus 2 is obviously just a straight line like this. You could set the sequence of this and solve it. But you know, this is Tamura, you want to be fast sometimes. So maybe you just notice that x equals 4 clearly makes those two things the same. Um, so therefore, no, it doesn't x equals 2. Sorry, yeah, makes those two things the same. So this intercept is at 4. This y intercept is or x intercept is clearly at 2 as well. Um, so what we can do here is we can integrate the curve between 0 and 4 and then just take away this triangle for the answer. So let's do that. Let's integrate the curve between 0 and 4. That's x to the half, obviously. And then the triangle is going to be 2 times, uh, well, the height here is, is 2, right? Because root 4 is 2. Or because 4 minus 2 is also 2. And so it's a half times 2 times 2. Good. So do some integration. Put the number in. Um, 4 rooted is 2 cubed is 8 times 2 is 16. And then just take away 6 thirds, which is 10 thirds, and we'll have our answer. Next one, uh, we're going to do this a lot this time today. You could work out areas of trapeziums uh, and do like the area of the trapezium here, take away the curve, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to work out the intercepts, which uh, so obviously set the sequence of this. If you can find a shortcut, then great. Otherwise, just say that it's 3 and 1 like this. And then we need to do the integral between 3 and 1 of the line, take away the integral between 3 and 1 of the curve. Except I'm not actually going to do that because since the integrals are the same, I can just do this one minus this one and bring them onto the same integral. So that just makes minus x squared x minus minus 3x is plus 4x, and then 4 minus 7 is minus 3. And uh, yeah, we can just integrate that, put the numbers in. You've got to be really good at fractions um, at this. Um, I'm, you'll notice a lot in this video, I'm just going to skip to the end, because my fractions are very good. And uh, basically, the working that's on the screen is the maximal amount that I would write down before just arriving at the answer every time. And that's because my fractions are very good. You might also want to make sure your fractions are very good as well, um, particularly on integration questions. It turns out that it's important. Uh, we've got x squared here, which looks like that. We've got x plus 2, which looks like this, I guess. And then once the region bounded by these, thankfully the region is entirely above the x-axis, which means we can just integrate between the two intercepts. Notice again that 2 is clearly a solution to this, so one is at 2. The other one is at minus 1, which you could find by um, by setting these equal to each other and solving, or you could just notice that minus 1 clearly works, or just have seen these two things exactly like they are before and just know the answer. So we're going to integrate between 2 and minus 1. And again, just like before, just going to do the line take away um, the curve could do a trapezium again, but I'm just going to do it this way and then just bring them onto the same integral because that means I'm only really doing one integral in the first place. Put the numbers in and once again, just have to be very good at fractions. Um, and notice that this is um, 26, so plus 7 is 27 6, which divides by 3 to make 9 over 2, and that will be our answer. Got a couple of graphs out already for this one because we need to draw a curve here and the line. Now, the line's obviously easy to do. For this curve, I'm just going to find the turning point by completing the square and then say that it's going to be at minus half, minus five fourths. So it looks a bit like this. And we want the area here. Now that's an awkward area to find because some of it is below the x-axis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, this down here is at minus five fourths. So what if I just lifted both graphs upwards um, by two places? First, before I do that, I'm going to find the intercepts between the two graphs. So let's just do that very quickly. You get plus and minus one. So of course, because they're both on the line y equals x, these two coordinates there must be the intercepts. Now, like I said, this curve is currently setting down as far down as 5 fourths. So if you lift both graphs up by 2 to get these two new graphs with those new two intercepts, uh, those are the two graphs there, lifting up both by 2, the entire area is above the x-axis now, which means I can just integrate the line between um, 1 and minus 1 and take away the curve integrated between minus 1 and 1. Except again, just going to bring them together because why not? The x's cancel, which is very nice of them, and then it becomes easy to integrate and easy to put the numbers in. And uh, there's no count messing around here. There's no cancelling with the uh, with the areas because I've lifted them both up to be over the axis. So it works perfectly fine. Um, number five, more drawing. We've drawn the x squared graph before already here. You've got some random point a squared where the tangent is apparently hitting it, though I can see a gap, so this drawing is pretty bad. If we differentiate, we find that the, uh, the gradient of the tangent is obviously 2x, and the tangent hits it at a, which means the gradient of the tangent is 2a. Um, so it's y equals 2ax plus c. Now we can find out c just by saying that the tangent must go through a a squared. So we put that in, and we find c is minus a squared. So that's the equation of the line here. And, uh, and all we have to do to find this sort of middle area here is integrate the curve between 0 and this intersect, which is obviously at a and then take away the triangle, just like the first question, which has height a squared and width 
um, a, which is here, minus this figure here. So I need to find this point here, which is when y is zero in here. Um, and we find that's at a half a, obviously, to make those two things cancel. So that's the plan. Integrate the curve between zero and a, as I said, and then take away the triangle, which is a half, obviously, times the width, which is a half a, the difference between a and a half a, which is obviously just going to be a half a, and then the height, which is a squared. Uh, that obviously just integrates to a third a cubed because the zero doesn't matter. And then we take away this and we end up with uh, a cubed over 12 or a 12th a cubed for our answer. Number six then is also uh, more of the same sort of deal. Um, first thing I decided to do was um, complete the square again to, so that I could sort of sketch this graph properly. Now I'm going to assume first that a is positive. I'm just going to assume that it's positive. So if a is a positive number then this curve here looks like this. And this curve here has a negative x center of the turning point. And then I don't know whether that's positive or negative. I don't really care. I'll just put it down here like this. Um, now, we can also notice here um, something, which is that um, when you set the two graphs equal to each other to try and find these two intercepts, obviously one of them is at x equals 0, uh, because those a's cancel, and because we can see it, they both have um, y-intercept of a. Um, the other in intercept ends up being minus a, which is cool, because that's the same point as where this one turns. So these two things are supposed to intersect at the turning point. Um, that's kind of interesting. Now we need to find the area between them. Now I can't really do that easily because of this negative area here, so I'm going to use the same tactic I did before, which is to raise both graphs up. How much do I need to raise them up? Well, if I added a squared to both graphs, um, then this a squared would cancel here, and you'd just be left with a turning point of a. But I've already said that a is being assumed to be a positive number here, so I think that would be good enough if I just added a squared to both graphs to make them into this. Then I could integrate between uh, minus a, which is the x-intercept here, and 0. That hasn't changed from before, right? And, uh, and just take away the, the, the this one from this one. Oh, sorry, from the, the upside-down one from this one. And uh, and yeah, everything ends up cancelling very quickly when you take those away. Again, I'm going to bring them underneath one integral. You could even use the minus here to swap, and I did actually swap over the two limits and bring the two out as well. And then you can just do some very easy integration. And, uh, and by the way, all of this must equal, after I do all this and put all the numbers in, all of this must equal um, 9, which means that a is clearly 3, right? 27 over 3 is 9. Now, the problem is that there's another answer of plus or minus 3. So it could be e or it could be b. I assumed that whole time that a was uh, was positive. So what if we now argue that a is negative? Well, the picture would end up looking more like this, right? This graph would be all the way down here somewhere because the intercept is a negative number. And this one would have its turning point over on this side. So it would look a bit more like this, I guess. We still know the turning point um, would still be the intersect of, of that and the other graph because none of the maths that I did before changes when a is negative or positive. So it looks like this, and I can't see any reason to assume that this area here is any different to this area here. So without calculating the whole thing again or doing anything different, I think I'm just good to say that it's a plus or minus 3, and both of those things are absolutely fine, and, uh, and I'll just leave it there. Next one, we've got a mod function, so we know that we can just draw this out. This is the same graph, basically, we just drew, and then this one is just x minus 1 if we're over here, and minus x minus 1 if we're over here. Do watch my Timur mods video, because it's spectacular, and it will teach you everything what you, that you need to use uh, for mods in Timur. So just, just go watch that and stop asking questions. Um, so this is what this graph looks like, and this is what this graph looks like. I decided that all I had to do here was uh, uh, work out this area on the right, and then I could just double it to get the one on the left. So all I'll do is I'll find the intercept between x minus 1, which is just what this line is, and the curve, uh, which gets me uh, x is 2. Also, x is minus 3 is another one, but we don't care, obviously. So x is 2 is here, um, and then what's the easiest way of working out this kind of area in the middle here? Well, it's to notice that if you draw a line coming down here, that this area and this area I think are the same, because um, this is at 2. This is at 1 here. 1 minus 1 is 0, so this is at 1 here. Um, and then this is also at 1 down there, um, and then at, at 2, this graph is also at 1 high. So this triangle and this triangle are the same. They're both width of 1, and they're both height 1. Um, so this triangle and this triangle are, are, definitely, are definitely the same, which means that if I integrate the curve between 0 and 2 and get this whole area here, that's the area of this whole shape because this triangle can just be moved into this area, and I'll get that that shape that I was looking for. So I literally just need to work out that integral between 0 and 2, and then double it, because of course that will give me the other side. And this is very easy now. We just integrate, we put the numbers in, and uh, we do some maths, and we end up with 44 over 3. Um, that, of course, being um, 30 over 3, and then take away 8, and then you double it, you get 44. 
and that will be um, the answer to that one as well. Same deal here, we are not going to integrate a mod function, we are going to separate out the integrals into the positive part, and in the positive part the mod function does nothing. If you put mod bars around 0.1, they don't do anything, it's still 0.1. And then we'll take away, sorry, we'll add in the integral, the other half of the integral. But this time, whenever you put a negative into a mod, it times it by minus one in order to make it positive. So we replace that x with minus x every time. That simplifies out to this. These integrals are not over the same bounds, so we can't put them together. But we can obviously just integrate and put the numbers in. Do some math, stuff cancels, and we end up with two as our answer. Good stuff. Question number nine, then. So this looks uh, very standard. We're just going to say that's obviously x to the half. We're going to integrate, and then we're going to put the k's in. Hopefully, people can see where this is going straight away. You times by 3, then bring over the 15. And this is just a quadratic, right, in k to the 3 over 2. Not even going to bother making a substitution. I'm just going to literally factorize straight away and then say that, uh, that this one obviously doesn't have any solutions because this is defined to be positive because you're square rooting it at some point. And this is going to be um, k 3 over 2 equals 3. Raise both sides to the power of two thirds, and that will clear this out uh, to make k to the one, which is this, which is that answer there. And uh, and yeah, we're good to go. Question ten then. So what we should really do with f and g here is we should just evaluate them. X we can just pretend is a constant if we're integrating with respect to t. So this is x squared t squared. But when you integrate that, that becomes a third x squared t cubed. And then we can obviously put one and zero in. But remember, your one and zero are going into the t because this integral is over the t. So put the 1 and the 0 in, but that just, of course, just makes a, a third x, x squared. Uh, over at g of x, same kind of deal, just integrate to a third t cubed, but put the x in now to make a third x cubed, and that will be g of x. Now we need to work out g of f and f of g. So, okay, uh, f of g is what happens when you put the g of x into the x, so it's a third times this thing squared. Uh, we can work that out, it's this, and then likewise for g of f, we put this thing into here, and we get this here. And now we just need to say, well, okay, some uh, clearly for large values of x, this one is bigger than this one because you're just dividing by 27 instead of 81. So for large values of x, this is clearly bigger. But then, you know, that might be different for values of x between 0 and 1 because, you know, x actually gets, um, sorry, the, the number actually gets smaller when you raise it to the power of 6, but it actually doesn't make a difference, right? Because if you just set this equal to this, you find the only intersect is at x equals 0, clearly. Um, and so therefore, they don't ever actually meet. This one is clearly bigger when you've got large numbers, values of x, so therefore it's bigger all the time. So I think the answer is b, f of g is, is just bigger than g of a all the time. At least for positive values, right? Um, yeah. It's also Is it also true for negative values as well? Um, yeah, because the graphs just go back up the other side. Doesn't make a difference. Okay, whatever. Uh, for 11, find the minimum value of this. Uh, so again, let's just integrate this with respect to x. We're gonna, I'm going to expand the whole thing out first, just because why not. Then ignore the t's, just pretend they're constants. Integrate with respect to x, and then put the 1's in to the x's. The zeros don't make a difference, obviously. And now we're looking for the minimum value of that, and that's a function of t. So all we have to do is differentiate that with respect to t this time, because it's now a function of t. Set it to 0, you find t is a quarter. And now we can just put that value of a quarter into f of t, and uh, we uh, can just calculate this, right? And we'll find a minimum value of 5 over 24. You could go ahead and prove that's a minimum, but, I mean, it's a positive quadratic, so of course it is. And, uh, and we move on. Trapezium rule. Now, you don't get given the trapezium rule in Tamura because you don't get it given anything. So I think I'm best off just drawing this because I obviously don't remember the trapezium rule. This is a cubic with roots at 0, 3, and 6. So it looks a bit like this, except it's got a mod function around it. So it's always positive. We're only caring between 0 and 6, so I don't care about this part or this part. All that's going to matter to me is that this part is going to flip over to be on the top, and so it ends up looking a bit like this between 0 and 6. Now, if I'm doing this with 4 trapezia, how do you get 4 equal to width trapezia in here if that's 0, 3, and 6? Well, you actually just use 4 triangles between 0, 1.5, 3, 4.5, and 6. So, uh, I mean, I guess a tr triangle is a type of trapezium. We're just going to work out four triangles and add them together. It will be a massive underestimate, but that's kind of okay. Um, so this triangle here, we need to evaluate the function at 3 over 2. So if that's the function, let's evaluate at 3 over 2. Again, being good at fractions helps here, um, but essentially you just end up with a load of 3s on top and a load of 2s on bottom. The negatives don't matter because you're modulus, modulus in it anyway, and you end up with that. 
Um, now, okay, so the area of this triangle here is going to be a half times that times 3 over 2. At this point, you see the answers are all in terms of powers of 3 and 2s. So this is just 3 to the 5, and that's just 2 to the 5. Um, but of course, the other triangle on the other side is going to be the same, right? Because it's also same width, same height, same times by a half, because it's a triangle. So we end up with um, 3 to the 5 over 2 to the 5, but there's two of them, so that's 3 to the 5 over 2 to the 4. Now, you could be brave and just decide that this one is also the same and just double this to get a 2 to the 3, which would be answer A, or you could just calculate it properly. It turns out it is the same, right? You end up with essentially exactly the same numbers on top and on bottom. The single negative doesn't make a difference, obviously, because you're modding it, and so that logic is exactly fine, and you can say the answer is A to that question. Question 13, then. So we've got um, a quadratic root uh, A and B, so it looks a bit like this, uh, where they're both positive. And we want this area down here, so this is very easy. We're just going to integrate between A and B this function, except we're going to slam a negative sign in front because that integral will give us a negative because it's underneath the axis. So we'll put a negative in front to make sure we get a positive answer at the end. And yeah, all we have to do, I've expanded this out, by the way, to get here. We just have to integrate with that with respect to x, and then we have to throw B and A in. And now I'm going to be quite lazy here. I'm, firstly, I'm going to tidy up this. So this is like, what, minus uh, a sixth B. But then I can use this minus in here to turn the signs over in this one and then just cancel out the minus from that one along with cancelling some stuff here and you end up with this. Oh, sorry, collecting some stuff here to end up with this. And now I can see a sixth B cubed and, a, and minus a sixth A cubed. So the only answer that makes any sense is this one here. And I, I couldn't be bothered to check that the other stuff actually works um, because I don't care. This is the only answer that, that has any chance. So I'm going to underline it and move on. Next one's really interesting. They, they asked an identical question to this nearly in the math paper, I think from 2014 or so. Um, the key thing here to first say is that this object over here is just a constant because no matter what function f of u is, when you integrate it and then put in one and minus one, you're just putting in numbers, you get a number out. So this whole thing is a number and let's just call it k. And also it doesn't matter that these are u's and these are x's. This is called the Taylor Swift law for integration. You can put whatever thing, whatever dummy variable you want in there. Uh, if as long as it's a definite integral, the evaluation is the same. Because even if I integrate this to become Taylor squared over two, when I put the numbers in, it like it it goes away anyway. Um, so so it's just the same value. So okay, firstly I can just call this whole thing k, and I can say k is the thing that I'm looking for because this thing and this thing is the same. The next thing I have to do is to appreciate that we all know you can just differentiate both sides of an equation and you're fine. You can also integrate both sides of the equation and you'll also be fine. And more so, you can also definitely integrate both sides. And I'm not just saying you definitely can do it. I'm saying you can take the definite integral of both sides. So I, what if I just took the definite integral between one and minus one of both sides here? Um, that should be fine. Notice that I've replaced this with a K because I can. Um, and then of course, when you're doing an integral of this thing plus this thing, you can just do the integral separately. You can bring the four out. And obviously this side over here, I can just integrate, right? This integrates to x, put in the one and minus one. This integrates to a third kx cubed, put in the one and minus one. Over here though, this thing is just k. We said that ages ago. And this thing here, the, the graph is reflected in the y-axis, but that's fine because you're just integrating between minus one and one. So the evaluation will be the same anyway. It doesn't matter. Um, so that is also k. So this makes 4k. And then we put the numbers in and we end up with an equation in k, which we can solve pretty easily. And we'll end up with the answer of a for this one here. And then the very last question, place the following integrals in order. Um, so let's start with k here. This root x is obviously x to the half, which then going to bounce to the front and then come all the way out the integral like this. But that's just a half of l. So if k is equal to a half of l, that means that k must be less than l. So, okay, we can only look at answers here where k is less than l, and that'll be fine. Well, I think we're down to just three of them or so. Now let's look at these two and compare these two. Um, now, this is a little bit harder to do, and we need to get out some a little bit better maths, but let's think about the log to base 4 of x graph between 1 and 4. So at 1, log to base 4 of 1 is 0, and at 4, log to base 4 of 4 is, is 1. So this is just a log graph that curves upwards to 4 up to the value of 1. Now, now let's think about this graph here, which is the root log to base 4 of x graph. Now, in this range between 1 and 4, all of those outputs are between 0 and 1. And when you square root stuff between 0 and 1, it gets bigger, right? The square root of 0 0.64 is 0 0.8. The function lifts up. And so all of these values are going to be slightly higher, which means when I curve this over, the area beneath it is going to be bigger, right? And they start and end at the same point, critically, because root 0 is still 0 and root 1 is still 1. Um, so this integral here is going to be bigger than this one here because all the values are slightly higher. And that gives us our um, complete chain, and we have the answer of A. 
Thank you so much for watching and thank you again to Jacqueline for writing a really nice paper.